SCP-3149 Monkey Business Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures The building containing SCP-3149 is currently owned by the Foundation and has been completely sealed from the public. At least two security personnel are to guard the entrance to SCP-3149 at all times. Any individuals attempting to gain access to the building are to be apprehended, interviewed, and released after administration of amnestics. All specimens of SCP-3149-1 are to be stored in an enclosure at Site-10 and fed twice a day in accordance with Nutritional Chart 3149-1-1. Any testing involving SCP-3149-1 must be approved by at least one member of Level 3 personnel. Due to the relative docility while inside SCP-3149, all specimens of SCP-3149-2 are to be contained within it. Observational equipment within SCP-3149 is to be used to confirm the presence of all SCP-3149-2 specimens at all times. Description SCP-3149 is an extra-dimensional space accessible by walking backwards through an empty doorframe located in an abandoned office in Los Angeles, California. Graffiti next to the doorframe provides the following instructions for accessing SCP-3149. You do the hokey pokey and you turn around. Upon walking backwards through the doorframe, the individual concerned is instantly transported to SCP-3149, the interior of which resembles a large warehouse. No natural source of light are available through the windows of SCP-3149, and all attempts to breach through its boundaries have been unsuccessful. The primary contents of SCP-3149 in terms of objects are 100 desks, 100 laptop computers atop these desks, 100 printers placed below each desk, a large chute in the center of the room, and when first discovered, the corpse of one elderly woman. A freestanding doorframe is also present in SCP-3149, allowing individuals to exit it using the same method. Evidence suggests SCP-3149 was a facility utilized by Group of Interest 1783, Westhead Media, for the purpose of mass-producing written literature, primarily via a workforce of SCP-3149-1 specimens. SCP-3149-1 is the collective designation for, at the time of writing, 73 Formosan rock monkeys, originally found producing literature within SCP-3149. All specimens of SCP-3149-1 differ from non-anomalous specimens of their species in that they possess a large opening on their back and tended to be filled with written works. Despite the presence of the opening, the bodies of SCP-3149-1 specimens appear to be able to function as normal. When a written work is inserted into the back of an SCP-3149-1 specimen, they will adopt the personality and memories of that work's original author. Despite receiving a human personality, the SCP-3149-1 specimen will remain unable to vocalize outside the extent of that possible for a monkey, making nonverbal communication necessary. When first brought into Foundation custody, the SCP-3149-1 specimens were determined to have identical personalities to a number of famous and successful authors, with the exception of severe trauma brought about by their time in SCP-3149. Use of SCP-3149-1 specimens for intelligence and historical purposes is under consideration pending a verdict from the Ethics Committee. SCP-3149-2 is the collective designation for ten organisms superficially resembling lampreys of abnormally large sizes, reaching heights of 1.5 meters and lengths of 3 meters. Despite the resemblance to lampreys, Specimens of SCP-3149-2 are land-based and move by slithering across the ground. Analysis of the bodies of SCP-3149-2 specimens has shown that they have little in the way of eternal organs, suggesting they are animated through anomalous means. SCP-3149-2 specimens are docile towards individuals from outside SCP-3149 unless one attempts to remove them, at which point they will become hostile until allowed to return to their original position. When a specimen of SCP-3149-1 fails to meet its quota of one page every ten minutes, the nearest specimen of SCP-3149-2 will move to their position and exact physical punishment. 
This largely consists of blunt force inflicted using SCP-3149-2's tail or lacerations using SCP-3149-2's mouth. These attacks are invariably focused on the legs and torso of the specimen of SCP-3149-1, presumably so that they remain able to use their hands for writing purposes. While these injuries are painful, they are rarely permanently damaging. This is also presumed to be intentional on the part of SCP-3149-2, as they have proven capable of inflicting greater injuries during attempts to remove them from SCP-3149. SCP-3149 was initially located following the successful escape of a single SCP-3149-1 specimen, who came to the Foundation's attention following several 911 calls reportedly made by a monkey. The agents who proceeded to the source of these calls were then directed to SCP-3149 by the SCP-3149-1 specimen in question. Interview 3149-1 Upon initial containment, an interview was conducted with SCP-3149-1-2 by Dr. McCall. SCP-3149-1-2 is viewed as a leader figure by the other specimens of SCP-3149-1 due to seniority and, as a result, more experience with appeasing their captors. Interview was conducted using a text-to-speech interface for SCP-3149-1-2. Interviewer, Dr. McCall. Interviewee, SCP-3149-1-2. Begin interview. Dr. McCall. Well, uh, I suppose I should refer to you as Agatha. SCP-3149-12 No. Um, sorry? I am not Agatha Christie. I am a copy of Agatha Christie. This was made clear to me before your people arrived. Uh, see. May I ask what was the last thing you remember before your captivity? Dying. At my house. Oh. I'm sure that must have been disconcerting? Indeed. Then, I wake up in the body of a chimp in a warehouse and told to write. Told to write by who exactly? The old woman, the Swede. She worked for a company, a thing called Westhead. That was all she told me. That and how much I was to write. The rest she left to the bookworms. You had no further interaction with her. Aside from her coming to deliver our food, none. Hmm. I'm led to believe you're a leader among the people found within SCP-3149. What? Oh, sorry, the, uh, the warehouse. Ah, uh, I'm a leader only in that I was one of the first ones to made to work there. The one before me killed himself shortly after my arrival. Threw himself under one of the bookworms. I, uh, I see. I don't remember his name, he was either after my time or far before it. I'm the only copy of me though, I'm sure of that. There are 27 of someone called J.K. Rowling. They would fight about that, about who of them was real. Scratching and spitting like they really were monkeys. Yes, we've become, uh, familiar with their behavior. I'd imagine so. Please, forgive me, I am very tired. We'll return you to the enclosure shortly. And when will we be leaving? We're not, are we? We should have just run, not called the police at all. If I may say so, Christy, I am not Agatha Christie. I am a monkey, and you are all but zookeepers. End lock. Addendum 3149-1 SCP-3149-1 Living and Working Conditions Testimony from SCP-3149-1 specimens suggests that they were subjected to rigorous work hours during their time in SCP-3149, being permitted only five hours of sleep a day, and said during work hours, being required to complete one page of narrative every ten minutes, or be punished by attending SCP-3149-2 specimens. Feeding took place once a day. Inspection of the food provided to SCP-3149-1 showed that while being insufficient in terms of nutrition for Formosan rock monkeys, 
they contain numerous chemicals that intensify creative impulses. Upon completion of a narrative, SCP-3149-1 specimens were ordered to place it into the chute at the center of SCP-3149. Analysis of the chute shows that documents inserted into it disappear from their position during their descent, presumably being transported to a Westhead Media Distribution Facility. Narratives written by SCP-3149-1 and deposited in the chute have been found on sale in numerous anomalous communities, including Three Portlands, the State of Lee, and Backdoor Soho. The site of the chute bears the following text. Westhead Media. What's yours is ours. Inspection of the living quarters of SCP-3149-1 has revealed a large amount of documents made using paper smuggled from the main workplace of SCP-3149. These documents were presumably written by specimens of SCP-3149-1. This is difficult to verify, however, as the specimens of SCP-3149-1 collectively refuse to share information regarding their captivity due to suspicions regarding the Foundation's intentions. Although the recovered documents were brief, presumably due to a combination of exhaustion and near-constant oversight from employees of Westhead Media, they most commonly call for the specimens of SCP-3149-1 to escape, kill the woman, and enact revolution. Several severely decomposed SCP-3149-1 corpses are also present in these living quarters. According to the limited information that SCP-3149-1 specimens have been willing to share, these were kept there as a warning after numerous escape attempts. Addendum 3149-2 Sample of Produced Narrative The following is a sample of a narrative, Harry Potter and the Isle of Lost Dreams, written by SCP-3149-1-27 and recovered from a bookstore in Backdoor Soho. SCP-3149-1-27 is one of the several specimens that possesses the personality of J.K. Rowling. Harry looked at Hogwarts. Even with Voldemort dead, Harry's time at Hogwarts wasn't over. His eighth year was in full swing, after all, and he had exams to worry about, not to mention the mysterious pendant he'd found in the lake. Lake. Harry looked at the mysterious island at its center. The Isle of Lost Dreams, if it was real, was something the Death Eaters would definitely want their hands on. Their mysterious new leader West had most of all. Putting his wand back in his pocket, Harry sighed and stuffed his wand back into his pocket. His pet monkey, who he frequently exploited for his own benefit, hopped onto his shoulders. A lamprey hung limply from its heel. Things really were going to be exciting this year. Addendum 3149-3 During secondary inspection of SCP-3149, personnel activated a broadcast system within the building, which had presumably become disabled at some point prior to Foundation containment. Loudspeakers throughout SCP-3149 will repeat several phrases on loop. All phrases are spoken by a woman with a heavy Swedish accent. Analysis has shown that the audio from these loudspeakers has mild compulsive effects on the minds of SCP-3149-1 specimens, subtly encouraging work and discouraging rest or dissent. Presumably, these compulsive effects were not sufficient to subdue SCP-3149-1 after a certain length of time in SCP-3149. The specific phrases spoken are, The bookworms are here to help you reach your full potential. The West Head is so grateful for your contributions. There is no rest for the weary. Your readers are waiting. Deadlines are non-negotiable. This is a collaboration. You deserve this. Don't forget your fellows. Can't you smell them? What's yours is ours. Thank you for listening to SCP-3149. If you enjoyed this SCP, please follow the link in the description to the SCP Wiki and vote it up to support the article and the SCP Wiki as a whole.